Good afternoon, everybody. I am particularly delighted to be here. Before now, we have had a lot of calls from Bonjogora, from Mina, Niger State entirely, that it was about time we come down home because they were waiting for us. I've got news for you. This has begun and we ain't stopping. We cannot expect people who have a reference point of yesterday to determine our future. Our future should be determined by people who see a vision that lies ahead. Thank you. So, I intend to make this as interactive as possible so that um, I will understand sincerely what you people want. So I haven't prepared any speech that is supposed to just um, come blow some grammar and allow everybody to go home. First of all, fellow Nigelites, friends, aspirants, invited guests, special guests, and of course, the one group of people that make me bold, stand tall, stand firm, believe, give me the courage to stand to continue what we're doing. The Nigerian youth, I thank you. Thank you for coming. First of all, um, I want you to know from the crowd, right? What is the first thing you would want our administration to put in place when we get into office? So I've heard lights, I've heard agriculture, I've heard job creation. I've heard transportation. I've heard corruption. Corruption. I've had education, youth empowerment. So, infrastructure, okay. The economy. Mm. Okay, fantastic. You have, you have mentioned about 10 major things. But this is where we keep making the mistake every time. Over the years, we've been left dilapidated to the point of no return. But it's not true. We shall return. And before I die, I will make sure we have a better life for ourselves. Sure. And that of our children should be guaranteed. Sure. But more than anything else, I want us to be sure of one thing. Yes, we are youth. Yes, we are innovative. Yes, we are strong, we are courageous, we are divisive, we are special. We want a better life for ourselves. We want to be the ones that create the policies that will define our future and the future of our unborn children. Yes. But, we should not forget one thing. We definitely need the wisdom of the old to ensure that this works right for us. And no matter what any of us thinks, I want us to bear in mind very clearly that it is not, this, it's not like those old people or supposed old people do not want to see something positive work for Nigeria. No. But they don't know one thing. They have actually run out of ideas. And their failure to include us in the polity, in the governance, is what is setting us backwards. We have to systematically let them understand that we're not trying to take them to the prisons or lock them up or change them or send them to their early graves. No. We want to work with them, but we want to stay in the forefront. Let us make something very clear. Not too young can lead us. Let me make something very, very clear. If the civil service structure, which I am sure Nigeria State unfortunately happens to be a civil service state, with all this land, 10% of the land in Nigeria is here. The topography is the best in Africa for agriculture. It doesn't just stop at that. It took six months unstoppable rain that can give you whatever kind of crop you want to focus on. It doesn't just stop at that. It's got solid minerals. It doesn't stop at that. It's got vibrant people. So why are we a civil service state? Why do we have to sit down every month and expect something to come from the center to ensure that we, 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 we um, get um, food on our tables? And so if you're not in the civil service system, you are totally out of uh, the count. Why? 
this will change. Yes, And for my dear friend, the APC Youth uh, Rep that is here, I'm very grateful for coming. And um, I don't want us to make this about a party issue. So long, for so long, many things have separated us. Religion, tribe, uh, ethnicity. Uh, we come back and then we move to political uh, party affiliations. Then we move to social status. We move to gender. We move to sexual orientation. And so many things have divided us. And that is why when you go to the comments on social media, they are unbearable, they are disgusting. So thank you for looking beyond party lines and being part of this. I'm very happy you're here, and I appreciate the questions you asked. I have a message for you. When you go back, ask them, what have they done about power? Not me. I have been here, I did present to you before here, one of the members of my team presented to you how we can actually generate electricity from just a touch of water. Solution has already been provided. Solution has already been provided. We're not just talking. We have presented something to you. We showed you plans that we have for agriculture, the entire value chain, from production to the farm gates, to the logistics, to the processing, to the storage, to the transportation, to the end, the end users and all of that, an entire value chain that can keep our youth gainfully employed. Not just taking the raw products from the farm and thinking of going to export them to. Stealing our jobs away. When we can have, actually have this processing plant here, this storage plant here, so that when I buy a tube of yam 100 naira in January, I can buy it 100 naira in November without any shakings. That is what we should be thinking of. So when you go back home, please, Deliver this message. Tell him Ahmed Bari says hello, respectfully, and says that, look, it's not a contest. It's not a war. But it's a plea to allow those who have got solutions take the front row. So I appreciate how you all responded to the different questions we asked from what you would want to happen first in Nigeria. And I want to say how I think it will work best. The one thing that is missing in this country that causes insecurity, that causes wars, that causes uh, distrust, that makes us fight each other, that makes us unable to work from point A to point B or become a productive um, citizen or productive citizens as the case may be, is food security. Hunger is our first problem. Whatever anybody tells you, hunger is our first problem. And that is why when the action print, my dear APC friend, when the action print comes out, it's not going to be telling you about Vision 2040. No, it's going to be telling you about what we have started already and how we intend to continue it. So it doesn't just stop at that. The reason why I want all you to be part of this is one, we cannot achieve this if we do not have the political power to establish and execute all the plans that we have. But the political power does not just stop at the desk of the president. The National Assembly cannot be undermined. The decisions that have been made in that house are very paramount to our existence. So when you go to the polls in 2019, make sure we are putting people into office that will listen to the agenda that we have presented and we ensure that they have been passed. And when they don't, we vote them out. Yes. It's simple. There should be no gallivanting. We should be having no reason to think once or think twice about whether we should allow people to continue if they're not performing. Your performance should determine your presence. It doesn't just stop at that. Dear Nigelites, this is my home. Unlike um, who called him the Minister of Agriculture. He's actually in my think tank, and this is what we do every day. Think about policies, think about strategies, think about ideas that we can embrace that can make us one of the top nations in the world. From power, Nigeria said is the power state of the country. It has got three major dams, three major power plants that is supposed to give us so much power we will begin to share with other people. They will make us super rich, just the way the Niger Delta are super rich with the oil that they have. But our power doesn't even get to us. It's a disaster. It's 
a shame. So, food security, agriculture is paramount to me. It has to be taken care of fully and effectively. And then the next thing, my dear people, jobs. We have to create jobs. Because whatever infrastructure we're going to develop for you people, if you don't have the money, you can enjoy it. So jobs have to be created. And that brings me to our white trial plan. And the white trial plan is an initiative called the Youth Talent Recognition and Development. So from the very beginning of your study in school, we want to be able to start identifying where our young people would proceed. And if you look back into our history, I remember there was a time the late Sir Donna would go from secondary school to secondary school, identifying the talents that different people had in the class and ensuring that they follow a career in that path. What happens? No more of that. Why? How come we've been unfortunately given leaders that do not really care how we progress? But one of the reasons I will tell you, once you do not prepare for tomorrow, you'll be scared of that tomorrow. And so what is very important for all of us is to ensure that as we are trying to take over, as we are trying to become relevant, it is also very important for us to prepare what happens to us when we hit retirement. We can be selfish about it. We can say every senior citizen be above 65 gets free transportation to any part of the country. We can be selfish about it and say every senior citizen in this country gets salary paid to him just the way it was paid to him while he was in active service. We can be selfish about it and say every senior citizen has a special shopping mall he can go to because he cannot be dragging with other people. Yes, we can do that. And when you do that, you will not be thinking about how to amass wealth because everything has been provided for you. That's how I want us to think. We move away from jobs and we look at what other things will be have. The big part, education. And our educational system is different. We're going to change education through technologically advanced systems. Through technology that is going to be exciting, not just to the teachers, but to the students. The unfortunate situation that happened in Kaduna recently can happen in any state. 21,000 jobs lost. It's 21,000 families lost. Imagine every, each of the every one family has five people. We're looking at 120,000 people disenfranchised. How will they feed? How will they take care of themselves, their families? What are we talking about? What about the insecurities that will come up after this? What about the sabotage of the government? So before you make a decision like this, which I support, by the way, you have to create a platform that everybody is going to fall back to. To ensure that even when you are telling them you cannot function as a teacher, we can function in the value chain that we have built for agriculture. Because, to be fair to these people, they actually got into this place through the system. The bank system got them into office in the first place. Got them as teachers. So what are we doing to ensure that this system be fair to these people and ensure that we do not create a bigger havoc? So we have to create that, we have to ensure that that stigma that I am sure those 21,000 teachers have right now will be managed in the shortest possible time before it turns to something else. Who says teachers can become Boko Haram? So, policies made by analog leaders cannot sustain the 21st century young people. And for those people who have asked me, how come we only see you on social media? Hello, I'm here today. <laughs> I'm here. You can ask me whatever questions you want to ask me with regards to policies, with regards to our action plan, and with regards to what we have for the future. If social media is the easiest tool at our disposal, we will use it and continue to use it. We don't have a choice. We haven't stolen any money to run campaigns that we cannot even account for. We don't, and we will not. So if anybody is here thinking that we have come to share money, I'm sorry to say, we have come here to tell you our plans, and if you want to be part of the future that is going to be guaranteed, secure, and protected, then be part of us. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, all we have mentioned will not happen if we do not have a proper data management system. 
And when I mean by proper data management system, when we talk about agriculture, we all know the problems that encompasses agriculture, where there's sodium fertilizer or diverted fertilizer, where there's diverted seedlings, where there are diverted fingerlings, because certain people will not let them get to the right consumers. We've got a data system that doesn't just capture the number of farmers, but also capture the size of the lands and the accurate amount of fertilizer that will be needed to ensure that those crops germinate properly. This is how I want us to start thinking. So when you are deciding to push something forward, you know exactly how much you're pushing forward and to who it gets going to reach. And it's important for us to understand one thing. Whether we want to access health, whether we want to access transportation, like some people mentioned, infrastructure and things like that, my dear youth, if we do not know how many people we are taking care of, if we do not have a proper data management system, then tell me how can we even provide a budget for Nigeria? The Minister of Interior cannot tell me exactly how many Nigerians exist. Our borders are porous. People working every day with intention not to return. People working without clearly defining to us what plans they have for Nigeria, or why they're going to be here, how long they're going to be here, and when they're going to leave. We need a proper data management system that's going to identify these people, that's going to tell them, tell them exactly when they're supposed to go, and if they stay beyond that, they get into the troubles of the law. Fine, we welcome everybody. There's an ECOWAS uh, free trade zone that exists, but you have to tell us why you're here. And if the skills that you have is not going to be beneficial to Nigeria, I am sorry, you have no place here. But a proper data management system, we have to embrace. So, we always. So, without wasting much of your time, this is me presenting myself before Ninja State today. So, so, before wasting much of your time, this is me presenting myself before Ninja State today because this is my home. This is the place that made me the man that I have become today. And I thank every single experience that I have gained from this place. But I would not have been the kind of man I am today if I hadn't gotten the experience that I've gotten from across Nigeria. I'm a geologist by training. I've also trained myself as a business, international trade and business person. I'm also a geographic information systems and spatial analysis person. I have worked in the oil and reefs, doing the dirty jobs. I've equally worked with the telecoms. Today, I run an enterprise that employs a lot of young people. I want to see this opportunity to ask and recommend that those of you that have not had the time to follow us properly, please, don't get too tired. Follow us, prepare the questions, ensure that you ask us the kind of questions that will make us get this right so that we can provide you the governance that you deserve. I do not have any problem with criticisms because I don't have all the answers. But together, I believe that we can have something better for ourselves. My name is Ahmed Bari and I'll be running for the office. Get up, 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 get